Welcome to this Windows channel and this is my quick review of the latest build of Windows 10 which is the Insider Preview 14942. You see it here on the watermark at the bottom right. So this was released today, October the 7th, 2016. And it's been about a week and a half since we last, as the last build, uh, 14936. If you're in the slow ring, you guys had your first Redstone 2 build, 14931 was released this week. That was the first build for Redstone 2 to slow ring. And of course, we and the fast ring are continuing with, of course, builds. So this was released at 1 p.m. this afternoon. I installed it uh, about uh, 45 minutes into the, um, after the, they released it. Uh, install went well, no crashes, no problem. Once again, a flawless install. Pretty much the time that it takes on this machine to install a new build, which is around 50 minutes. And of course, afterwards, what did we have? We had a very solid build. I've been using this for more than six hours now. And uh, all I can say is that it's working flawlessly. No crashes, no issues, except one with Edge that I have. Uh, but apart from that, nothing much. The issue I have with Edge is that on some websites, when you've got menus where you can actually click for something, I've noticed that the uh, menus don't actually pop up. So for example, if I can click on an icon like this, what it does, it does nothing. So for some reason, some of the menus in uh, some websites, and I've seen this happen on YouTube and also on a few websites. So uh, that was working before. So I guess something is different in Edge, but uh, they, they probably did new things in Edge because one of the things I noticed is that all of my, um, preferences and all of the websites that it remembered stuff. Uh, I had to just re-log in because it wouldn't remember me. So there must have been a reset here <clears throat> in this uh, Edge browser uh, for s probably a few tweaks that they did. Uh, so this build is uh, has a few new features and of course a list of improvements and bugs. So let's check it out. So the features First one, this one, a lot of people are going to be happy. I got this request so many times since anniversary update, and it seems that it's one of the highest uh, ranking things that people hate about anniversary update. When you go to the start menu, you've got the app list here. And people have been complaining that they can't shut it off. Well, in this build, finally, they've added that switch. When you go to personalization, start, you can now hide the list, which means, here we go, no more apps. So this, I think it should have been an anniversary update, but at least, you know, they're doing it. So now an on off switch for this appears. Uh, also in this build, they've uh, made the um, Photos app better. It's improved it, uh, nav the navigation uh, of the different pictures and the way that it actually shows on the screen is actually better than what we've had in anniversary update. Um, I, I find that there is an improvement in the Photos app in the um, the anniversary uh, in this in this build. And look at how also they changed things. Instead of having a collections album and folders on their left side, they're leaving all this space for the pictures. They put it on top. I think this is winner. I think this is what we needed. Uh, and I think it is uh, well thought of. Also, you now have access to your um, you know, account here right on the right side. So a few tweaks that really improves on the Photos app. Uh, so uh, the photos are also easier to manage and make more beautiful. There is also a adaptable uh, background. So depending on the pictures you watch, it might want you to view them in a different way. So uh, there's a new light viewing mode for your pics. Uh, when viewing, viewing photos full screen, we've added new animations um, and out of the collection view, making it easier to keep track of where you're browsing. So uh, every time that you click, there's a new animation, there's a new way of doing things. So it's uh, pretty cool. And uh, actually, uh, really, really enjoy this. I think it's uh, one of those um, improvements that's nice also. 
Um, Photos app <coughs> also available on Xbox One. And it shows a slideshow of all your Xbox One photos and everything. It's pretty cool. Um, refining your precision touchpad experience. So the touchpad has been improved also. Uh, based on the feedback uh, we have received, we have made some adjustments to our gesture and click detection and precision touchpads. So on your touchpad is a more evolved touchpad with multi-touch gestures and um, you need more precision. There are new gestures and new ways of uh, using your touchpad. Also, uh, with this build, uh, now starting with build 14926, they said that all uninstalled apps, um, if you uninstall one of the pre-installed apps on Windows, the well, basically, uh, before 926, they would reinstall all the time. After 926, they fixed that. And after upgrading uh, from 14942, if an IT Pro has deprovisioned an app from your OS image and you haven't reinstalled it yourself, that provisioning status will now be preserved. So, uh, pretty cool. Uh, new Windows update icon introduced. New Windows update icon matched the rest of the new con uh, iconography of Windows 10. So, uh, they've just, uh, when we go here, here, and check out uh, the updates, well, here we go. Windows Update has a new uh, kind of update icon. Also, if you have more than 3.5 gigabytes of RAM install, the, um, <coughs> the task manager will now have more details of all the things that are running, um, basically because they will separate in two parts uh, all the performance stuff. So um, it might look a little more complex, but while this change may look concerning at first, uh, many will be ex excited to find out the motivation behind this change. As the number of pre-installed services grew, they began to get grouped into processes known as service hosts. And so in Windows 2000, note that the recommended RAM for uh, PCs for this release was 256 megabytes. So as the the, you know, the, the um, memory got higher and the service hosts also augmented. Now they have actually done different stuff. So here you can see that apps and background processes and uh, Windows processes are separated in different tabs and that these will even have more separation because if you have more memory, you will have more of the uh, individual applications and stuff uh, identified in here. So it, it kind of makes it a little more complex, but at the same time, it makes sure that you could see all the processes and all the background stuff that is um, a little difficult usually to see. So there's increased transparency. Task Manager will now give you a better view into what is going on behind the scenes. You can now see how much CPU, memory, disk, and network individual services are consuming, where that was grouped into one major service and you weren't sure exactly. So before you had one and there was not a lot of information about it. Now you can actually see each individual process and how much it will take uh, in here, which is something uh, nice uh, to see. Uh, basically, you also have uh, the expanding of uh, the um, uh, active hours. Now, you see here, change active hours. I have a pro version. Uh, in the regular version, it's a 12-hour span. And active hours prevents your computer from installing um, you know, updates and stuff like that. They've increased that. And in the um, pro version, which is the one I have now, this has increased to 18 hours, something that was not possible uh, basically with the um, regular version. Now, they should have done that on every version, but I don't know why they just did it on Pro and Enterprise and Education. But uh, people found that you know the active hours weren't long enough and you needed more active hours uh, before that, you know, than, than before. So it says here, you can set active hours up to 18 hours from your start time. So uh, that's interesting. Um, 
the uh, form field navigation and the narrator. If you use the narrator uh, as new commands to jump from field to field with uh, keyboard shortcuts, so they've in, you know added a few things here, and uh, it's kind of easier to navigate through all of these things. So these are pretty much what is the new stuff in this build. Now, as usual, there are broken things. I've told you about my issue with Edge. Uh, what's fixed or not, first of all, they've uh, updated Narrator's reading order for Windows 10, which uh, displays an app bar at the bottom. Uh, fix an issue, we're running SFC scan now. You know, last time you couldn't do it at 20% it would fail, now it's okay. Fix an issue resulting in certain areas of Windows 10 app notifications not doing anything when clicked. They fixed an issue resulting in personalization, background setting, page crashing, or showing blank. Fixed issue resulting in Windows Defender anti-malware service executable, sometimes using unexpectedly large amounts of CPU. Fixed issue with uh, device and printer page, control panel loading slowly. Fixed issue resulting in small set of users seeing the NTFS partition of their external hard drive incorrectly showing up as raw. Uh, going forward from this build, custom printer names will be preserved across upgrades. So if you change or customize the name of a printer, uh, that will be kept before they would always reset to the default. And uh, also address an issue where the printer queue name wasn't preserved across upgrade and improve frame rates when game bar is enabled for full, full screen games. What is a known issue in this uh, build? There's one, and it's simply insiders doing web development may find themselves that their local intranet uh, server unreachable as service of separation will leave the uh, IIS Worldwide Web Publishing Service um, unable to start. So uh, there's a registry fix for this, for the uh, LLS uh, stuff. And uh, basically, um, if you do the registry fix that they show, it, it kind of uh, goes around the problem. And apart from that, well, it's a good build. It works fine and no crashes, no problems. And um, if you are, we're just waiting to see if it worked good. Uh, go ahead, check it out. Uh, available in the Fast Ring users. And another uh, interesting build. And of course, I'll be using it uh, a lot because uh, this is one of the computers I use almost, um, I'd say it's the second most used computer in my home. So uh, at least we're checking out if everything's all right. So um, if you have installed it, why not share your thoughts on this? If you have problems installing it or it doesn't work, remember that you can go get the image file of 14931 and upgrade from there. Remember, every time you install a new um, insider preview uh, from scratch, you have to go and um, ask to be in the insider uh, again, and it can take up to 48 hours before any builds show up when you do so. So uh, have fun, and uh, why not share your own observations and comments of what you think of this build, and um, let me know if you uh, have any issues uh, also. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to my channel. You'll be informed when new videos are online. Give us thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and hope you enjoy my videos.